the RCM in Martinez. What can I help you with? We don't see a lot of police around here, that's all. Of course. What can I help you with? Sure, I'm done with it. Go easy on that stuff. It gave me a terrible headache. Well, uh, this might be the last snow we get. At least I hope so. Snow has nutrients in it. Helps everything green up in the spring. At least that's what my grandma always told me. Yes, think about the cute grandma, not the weird snow. Nitrogen and sulfur mostly. And whatever factories and aerostatics exhale too, I guess. A bit much? What are you talking about? That's what my grandma told me, okay? She feels interrogated now. It's hard to say if she's lying. Relax, miss. This is not an interrogation. We are just checking some facts. Stop looking at her. Look around. What do you see? That's right. And the canal. The bookstore. The harbor gates. This is a great vantage point for keeping an eye on you. No, of course not. I don't understand what this is about. The kid did this, right? The red-haired rat? Can't say a sentence without or kipped? He's always giving me trouble. Maybe you shouldn't be. I mean, you do your job, but that kid is beyond help. And he certainly won't help you. You've been resting here for quite a while, haven't you? Yes, I'm tired. I understand. The RCM isn't welcome here, and the locals want to keep an eye on us. There's silence. The smallest of smiles. That's okay, miss. Do what you have to do. I think we're done here. Let's go. Of course. Where to? What do you mean? Yes, sir. District of Martinez. This intersection is called Roundabout North. He knows where we are. He just wants directions. There's the pier, the Cape Side apartment buildings, some more tenements. Not a lot, really. The harbor gates. Some kind of commotion, I think. I don't follow the local politics. A fleet store, too. Some shops and a bridge. The canal bridge leads to the coast, but it's broken, I think. Some kind of accident, probably. Just coast. There's a little fishing village there and a fish market, but that got closed down ages ago. It's just water. No, actually, I think they call it the Martinez Inlet. There are some islands in the bay, but they're hard to reach. No problem. Excuse me? She's uncomfortable. Maybe you should drop this line of questioning. Oh. Well, I didn't write it there. I'm just sitting here. I don't know anything about that either. As I said, I didn't write it. Pig is a widely used term for members of the police. It's not loving. No need to worry. We are not saying you did. Okay. Well, I didn't. Of course. I won't hold you back. If there's a corpse, then you're going to need those gloves for the autopsy. Sure. Keep them. I have another pair.
I help you? Thanks. I hope you found what you were looking for. How strange. I certainly didn't put them there. Sylvie had the keys before I got here, and I can vouch for her. I can vouch for all my stuff. None of us would tamper with the crime scene. I think fugue states are more your forte, officer. The trash collection service, CS Municipal. I don't see why they would put anything in the trash, though. Ah, the elusive CS Municipal. I doubt we'll be able to track down who was sent here last and when. This will have to be one of those little threats that solves itself down the road. Thank you anyway. Yes. Yes, have you got it? A lot, a lot lot. For the room, drinks and broken window, 130 real. Like what? I was really enjoying talking about the money you owe me. Another thing, great. I love those. Yes. Wait, what? But what about the bird? Yes, the bird. I found it lying on the floor with a broken wing the morning she left. You broke the skewer! I assure you it was him. Why on earth did you have to break the skewer? I can't believe it. I was so sure it was Sylvie. Even worse, I thought she was trying to send me a message. A symbol of hope and all. A tender type of hope. Something stirs in you. Perhaps this is why you broke it. All right. Did she say anything else? About me, you know? Did, did she say anything about me? Really? I, I, should, I should give her a call then. Thanks, I guess. Was there anything else you wanted, or...? Thin man is smoking below an exhaust hood, occasionally sipping from his mug. This must be the Whirling's cook. As you step in, he nods toward the table and says something in a completely foreign language. The only words he can make out are Garanzi and Kubek. Okay, it's definitely not his name. Whatever you do, please don't call him Garanzi Kubek. Please, it's not funny. The man puts his cup down and replies something, his left hand drawing arcs in the air. He smiles and bangs his ladle against each of his pots in turn. It's almost like music, especially with the sounds of assorted dishes boiling and simmering on the stove. Can I help you? Another thing. Great. Yes. You see a heavy steel door with a prominent dimple lock. It's painted blue. You do? It's a door in the back of the kitchen. Why do you care where it leads? The winch. Outside, 
in the backyard. Remember? No, your fingers do. Hmm. Well, if there was a winch, I suppose we could look into it as a side investigation. If you say so, Gart is the person to ask about this, the cafeteria manager. The cobalt blue surface feels rough to touch. The stainless steel door is flush with its frame on every side. Old cobalt paint, rough on the fingers. 40, 50 years since this was painted, maybe. It leads to a side building, adjacent to this one. The old building next to this, half ruined. Whatever is behind it must be older. The door does not budge. Can I help you? Another thing. Great. I love those. Oh yes, that door, sure. There's nothing mysterious about it. It's just a door. No, I don't have a key. I don't know how to get there. And I don't care either. It's not like I've been wondering about it for ten years. It's just a frit warehouse, probably. Or some boring storage space with a bunch of old junk and dust. Junk and dust. He's attempting to maintain an air of indifference. It's absolutely not convincing. Fine, okay, a little. But my job doesn't leave me time for wondering about one locked door in one of the cafeterias I manage. So I haven't opened it. I have cleaned the whole place a hundred times over, though, after the animals. And I haven't found a key, so good luck with that. Yes? A colourful piece of plastic is dangling from his carabineer. Hmm. Makes your fingers itch. On the counter, rolled out of his open hand, you see a blister pack of headache medicine. No idea. Looks like he works for Wild Pines, the logistics company who owns and operates the harbour. Possibly because there's a strike going on in the harbour, there's not much to do aside from drinking and sleeping. It's a dock worker's ID doubling as a shift card and a job permit. A young, able-bodied man stares back at you from the photo. Santiago S. John. The man does not mind. You probably need them more than he does. You gently shake his shoulder, but nothing happens. This man could probably sleep soundly in a ship's engine room. entirely dedicated to that corpse smell. Emitting it is all it does now. There he still is. Look, the ammonia only makes it worse. 
The combination forces tears out of your guts. You manage to keep it in once. The second time, not so much. When the vomiting is done, your cheeks are wet with tears. Nor does the wind right now. I've seen strong men turn themselves inside out for hours. You are facing tough odds here. Alcohol withdrawal makes it considerably harder. I've seen captains puke their guts out. It never gets easier. You never get used to the smell. Every Monday is cadaver day. Throw up, investigate. Throw up, initial autopsy. Throw up, baguette. Then drive to the station. Maybe throw up on the way there, if you didn't bag the thing tight enough. I think I've lost my sense of smell. A white lie. Not being hungover helps too. That's probably a good idea. Clear our head. But before we can do that, you need to get your shit together. No, it's not, officer. We should go talk to the locals. Find something else to do while the wind changes. It's pretty bad right now. Give it half an hour. Get yourself together. Then come back and have another go.
Kim also tries not to look at the pile of tape viscera on the carpet, or the weird suitcase on the hat rack, or the potted plant dying in the corner. But it's all just too morbid to ignore. He nods. No problem, officer. The bed is cold and not particularly inviting, but it's yours. The sheets look awful. The fan is spinning. The blades come squeaking to a halt. A mirror hangs on the bathroom wall. In it, your face adorned with the expression. A mirror hangs on the bathroom wall. In it, your face adorned with the expression. The faucet is quite terribly mangled, but you just might be able to twist its parts into place. You handle the chain cutters deftly, applying just enough pressure. The faucet regains a recognizable shape. The steam stops. Told you that you needed those chain cutters. Everything is connected. Everything has a purpose. The mirror begins to clear slowly without you having to wipe it. Still not happening. It won't come off that easy. The door is closed. There is no answer. You hear the shower being turned on, somewhere inside. A tremendous loneliness comes over you. Everybody in the world is doing something without you. The door is indifferent to your loneliness. The world does not care. That sugary black rum stain on the counter makes you teary-eyed with joy. It's almost touching how syrupy and sticky it is. How long have you been up already? An hour would have been bad. Two hours is mystical. You have truly wiped out all trace of yourself if you haven't thought about rum and lemonade yet. Maybe you haven't turned out well for your drinking. Have you thought about that? Get a goddamn rum and lemonade to yourself, boy. Or better yet, lick that stain off the counter. What happened, man? You used to be cool. Go get your boring normal person drink then. It would go well with those cigarettes. That's a great combination. This Postla Vantorie mail collection box has been heavily vandalized with graffito. A closer inspection reveals two bullet holes in the front. The 
the box seems happy. Eat shit pig, fucked by the coon, and sent G with a crown have been scribbled on it. Jenny is a whore and best set mailbox also. The mail collection box seems cathartic, thankful even. So do you. You shudder, then you swallow. Worn and beaten wooden planks of the bench do not look overly comforting. Hmm. We can sit on benches after we've solved the murder. Let's go. Have you no shame? Whining about your back every time you bring out the measuring tape. Rene, you are a man with a fork in a world of soup. Please, let's just try to enjoy the game, all right? I'm trying to, but you keep breaking my concentration. You're old. I can see that. We're both old. Now stop grabbing your ass like it's a girl. These manly men are playing balls. This is a ball game. Grab a ball and play it. Don't ask questions. Shoot first. Ask questions never. No, you got this. There's the ball. You're the game. You are immediately surprised by the ball's lack of weight. No matter. You'll make it work. God, this is right. You feel the familiar tremble of excitement and adrenaline that precedes every victory. Time has frozen. The cold metal ball is surprisingly smooth against your neck. It has a pattern on it. Probably a sponsored ball. Yours would only be covered with bumps of learning and scars of victory. Already, your muscles are adjusting to the weight the nervous system calibrating until you and the ball have merged into a single entity. The man ball is ready. A chilly breeze ruffles your hair as you stand there, feet firmly planted. All sounds, smells, even the wind, everything fades until the only thing left is the union of man and ball. An embodiment of pure motion a fine-tuned locomotor running at maximum efficiency. Merde! Bordel de merde! A whorehouse of shit? It wasn't whorehouse of shit. The shot was at least 23 meters, probably 24, and then some. Nothing to be embarrassed about. What the hell is your problem? I don't care if you are a cop. You do not just ruin someone's game. It's so goddamn disrespectful. You vandalized our game, son. We can't play petonk with five bull. No, we are not good, goddammit! We want our bull back! Take it easy, René. This is just a misunderstanding, isn't it, officer? No harm done. Of course there's harm done, you orange slug! You are as a goddamn bull! Good! Mistakes are forgiven, when men at least try to right their wrongs. I believe you will try. Now why did you approach us? Yes, why did you come here? It's unlikely they know anything about the murder. Unfortunately, I don't. Unlike most of the locals, I have no qualms about assisting law enforcement. But this affair has passed me by completely. In Martinez, the union is the law. So can you really blame them? 
Cop is a pejorative term. I don't have a problem with policemen. On the contrary, I admire the effort to bring order to our streets. He doesn't know about the crime. Your time is better spent discussing politics. I'm confident they are indispensable in regard to all the paperwork and other administrative duties. But you must agree that nature, in her infinite wisdom, has made men more fit to perform certain more challenging tasks, don't you, officer? <laughs> really, officer. <laughs> Match an average woman against an average man in a dark alley and see who comes out on top. Gender equality is a very noble, very modern idea. But in real life, primal roles prevail. But I do not wish to discuss this matter further. Yes. The terrain here provides an interesting variety to a familiar game. Uh, no. It was left by heavy artillery fire. Why what? Because that's what happens when communists hijack your country, execute your supreme leadership, and turn your capital into a slaughterhouse. You use heavy ordnance to clean up your home. Commies, communists, socialists, anarchists, call them what you like. They just chose the name to feel special. Senseless sentimentality. Sadly, no. It was the foreigners who brought them to their knees. We fought valiantly. Too valiantly. So valiantly we got licked. Should have fought dirty, like they did with their suicide sex cult propaganda and mad anarchist women strapped to shrapnel bombs. We didn't, though, and we lacked caliber. God bless him, but the suzerain's cannon simply weren't big enough. Because this place is a damn beachhead. Had to soften the commies up first. Yes. The military coordinated amphibious landing to take back Revachel. Martinez was used as one of the three footholds in Revachel during Operation Deathblow in 08. The other two are off in Stella Maris and the Delta. This here is blood ground, where coalition boots first made landfall and cleaned those rabbit dogs out. Most likely, we're playing petonque on their mangled corpses. Blood ground. You got old René going there. Like he isn't hungry enough already. Mm-hmm. Don't get me wrong, officer. I hate those foreign dogs, but... Uh, the enemy of my enemy and all that. They're the lesser evil. Damn right, son. They laid the fire of hell on the city before they stormed it. And it worked, too. The rest of the city got cleaned up, but Martinez they keep as a monument. And now the Union Socialists are practically running the place. Well, it's your own damn fault. You, we, the Coalition, Revachol, whoever you want to blame, never finished the job. Officially, the party never surrendered. Of course they still all influence. You don't even begin to truly understand the players on the table, let alone the specific circumstances surrounding the... What do you think? Thinking men have opinions on these things. Present one. I'm sorry it had to be them. After eight years of fighting those hyenas, boiling cats for food and drinking piss in the mountains, I would have preferred if the right honorable King Guillaume returned through Revachal, or even if that damn clan Frisell had risen from the grave and led us. Sadly, that was not the case. Instead, all that is just, holy, and beautiful in the world was wiped away, and now it's neon signs with toothpaste ads everywhere. Foreign influence peddling garbage and stupid music on the radio. This is just what the commies wanted. This was their plan all along. This is what they wanted to replace the role of the suzerain with. Damn Frisell. He was the king we couldn't protect. The carabineers failed him. And the crown. 
He died in the hands of the Hyperlay, in a very public execution. He slouches as he says that. It makes him smaller, admitting they left the king to the mob. A true king in both blood and mind. Let whoever shall before Frisell. He would have been better, but the damn commies drove him into exile. Some manner of self-deceit is present in his thinking. Sounds like this Guillaume abandoned him, and he doesn't want to admit it. The suzerain is the king! Has everyone forgotten already? <sighs> they forgotten already. It's no use talking to you. You were still in Daddy's balls when it happened. When we took our last stand against the Fifth and rode the cavalry straight into gunfire. All you observe is a veteran refusing to let go of the past and his old uniform. This is not uncommon. This is the uniform of the Royal Carabineers in service of Frissel the First, Guillaume Le Lion, and the valiant King Philip V before him. Don't you mean Frissel the Fan? You do not speak his name, Craven, although he was a clown. But he was our clown, ours to ridicule and to mourn. There's something you missed. You will get to it. Don't worry. Volumetric shit compressor. Bizarre scientific news from Revachol West today, where a police officer's shit has been observed at a pressure of around 495 gigadecimals. These metallic hydrogen levels of shit togetherness were thought to exist only at the center of collapsing stars, not law officials. It remains to be seen how long the shit's singularity lasts. I have really outdone myself. This is divine. Yes, that's what you need, Gaston. More padding on that fat ass of yours. I hope your heart gives out. René, tsk, tsk. it's a little pleasures. Life doesn't need to be a, um, a struggle. Hello, officer. How might I be of assistance on this fine day? Let me think. I heard someone was hanged and left on a tree for a week. But that's all I know, really. Of course, officer. I mean, I hope I can. What's on your mind? I'm sorry, officer, but I really don't share food. Nothing personal, it's just a principle. The only one you have. Oh, that's good. That's very good. You must have other business then. A man so principled about his sandwich calls for a principled approach. Time to get political. This right here is political. Say one of these fascist or communist things, or fuck off. Whoa, easy there, Goldmouth. He doesn't have to say anything. Re-engage cop mode and bail out, if you like. All right. Let's hear them, officer.
Special thanks to my patrons, Justin Wood, Hobbs, Koopy Vegeta, Gunrunner, Water, and Bat. You can join my patrons at patreon.com slash holdengatsby, follow me on Twitter at holdengatsby, and follow my Twitch at twitch.tv slash holdengatsby. Don't forget to subscribe to both of my channels. Thanks for watching. Bye.